During the last two episodes of the Hunky Vape Global 20, 1,017 lives were lost from combustible tobacco smoking. And once again, zero lives were lost from nicotine vaping. Combustible tobacco continues to kill one person every five seconds. Yet this reprehensible deadly fact proceeds unabated. Demagoguery forces 17,280 people to die every day from smoking. And the only thing that kills more people globally is ischemic heart disease. Eight million people die from smoking and nine million people die from heart attacks. If the World Health Organization bothered to factor in the truth that one in four heart attacks are caused by smoking, maybe nicotine vaping could finally be universally adopted to end the atrocities of combustion. People tell me all the time, you can't yell change. Stop trying to preach vaping because it's not a religion. And you know what? I finally get it. There's nothing wrong with my audio levels. I'm simply presenting brutal facts that people cannot believe. Every five seconds, another person dies from smoking. All because tobacco control in anti-nicotine zealots deprave the delicious disruptive solution to snuff out combustion. Over 70% of smokers already want to stop smoking. And vaping is not smoking. Vaping is a disruptive technology invented by a pharmacist because his father died from smoking. And despite this fact, Han Lick, a pharmacist with access to every smoking cessation tool in the arsenal, could not kick the same three pack a day smoking habit that killed his father. Until he invented a combustion free way to smoke without smoke. And herein lies the wicked, odious, heinous, and immoral problem. With vaping, you get all the pleasures of smoking while minimizing or eliminating harm. It's why they call it the tobacco harm reduction, and it's definitive proof that vaping will eventually save over 8 million unnecessary deaths every year. What a glorious miracle for some and an inconvenient truth for others. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending February 12, 2022. Hey there, folks. This past week has seen countless legislative bodies ramp up their political assertions to ban the single best way to accidentally quit smoking. And we'll get to that shortly. However, since this is the global 20, we need to focus on China first and realize that the Beijing Winter Olympics isn't the only thing that's going on. One rarely talked about consequence of the USPMTA process and rampant regulations around vaping in other countries has been the increased need for empirical evidence of harm reduction. I'd love to get into how academic dogma is preventing smoking cessation studies from happening, but that's beyond the scope of this show. If you want to hear about that as a separate video, Leave a comment below and let me know. Otherwise, I need to report the lab competition is on. Electronic atomization companies have started basic research on safety. 
We're talking about long-term safety here. We're talking about clinical trials and clinical studies to clearly document product safety. And this is a big win for everyone, folks. In March 2021 and February 2022, Relix applied for two clinical studies on e-cigarettes in China Clinical Trials Registry. And they're not the only ones doing this. With the domestic e-cigarette national standard about to be implemented and the FDA's high standard review of e-cigarettes, aka the PMTA, e-cigarette brands and suppliers need to fully prove a regulatory agencies and consumers alike the harm reduction and safety of these products. Chinese companies also need to explore more possibilities for the industry from a higher dimension. In this process, leading companies with strong technical strength will quickly break through. And if you remember last week how I stated in the next six months you're going to see a rapid stratification of the vaping industry, well, this is what will move players to the top or out of the industry altogether. Regulatory implementation accelerates industry development and the industry wave is poised to take off. In the fourth quarter of this year, favorable policies will be issued in succession, and the development of the vaping electronic cigarette industry may accelerate. Domestically speaking, they are expecting the vaping market to grow with more than 1,500 e-cigarette manufacturers, creating nearly 1.5 million direct jobs. This is all as the new national standard whitelist regulates an orderly market. By contrast to overseas blacklist standards, which only prohibit certain ingredients, China aims to create a unified whitelist of allowable ingredients, whereby eliminating the accusation a Chinese manufacturer created black market devices with potential harmful substances. And here's what this all boils down to. The new regulations in China aren't meant to cripple the vaping industry. I mean, think about that. That would be economic suicide for China. They are using regulations and the registration requirements to standardize vaping at the source of manufacture. Is this going to prevent bad actors from tampering with safe products? Hell no. But it does give deniable protection deniability protection to the Chinese government and the vaping industry players by providing specific scientific proof that each of these products are safe if used as directed. Is this standardization going to stifle the vaping industry? Well, according to this article, no, because e-cigarette consumers continue to increase and the e-cigarette industry attributes are closer to consumer electronics. Electronic cigarettes are not an electronic substitute for traditional tobacco in China, but a technology product with hobby attributes, which is more inclined to consumer electronic products. The particularity of this product determines the key points of competition for e-cigarette companies in the next stage after the regulations are implemented. You know, I could go on and on with all these little details, but ultimately, the development of electronic cigarette industry focuses on innovation. In China's current e-cigarette market environment, brand owners with R&D and production capabilities can, on the one hand, strive for more market space in the future, and, on the other hand, are very motivated to absorb new technologies which can ensure the transformation of improved scientific research results. Vaping technology products are like graphics cards and science in general. They're constantly evolving with incremental improvements. Innovation drives sales and innovation drives favorable health results. Some say vaping has reached maturity. Well, this article states otherwise and it makes perfect sense. Just imagine Tesla announcing that they've perfectly engineered lithium sulfur batteries or graphene superconductors, or let's say that you can charge devices now with ambient light collected from a newer AMO LED screen. As technology improves, it can 
and must be incorporated in the next iteration of all technology products. You know, just because some countries' regulations literally prohibit changing the color of the label without FDA approval, that doesn't mean technological advancements won't march on. And as the regulatory prohibitive countries start to fall behind. Moving on, a 2019 study found that 19% of participants who used electronic cigarettes to quit smoking were no longer smoking a year later, while only 9% of those who used nicotine patches and gum quit smoking. And that comes from WebMD Connect to Care. Canadian Electronic Cigarette Association says e-cigarettes are effective for smoking cessation. Well, actually, it's not the Canadian Vaping Association that said that. Science has said that. Science has found that e-cigarettes are the most effective tool for quitting smoking. Science has found that e-cigarettes are the most effective tool for quitting smoking. For the past seven years, Public Health England has maintained that vaping is unlikely to exceed 5% of the harms of smoking. And actually, Cancer Research UK takes that a step further because they have determined that e-cigarettes have less than 1% of the cancer harms of smoking. But I don't want to digress. As e-cigarettes are considered a harm reduction product, the target discussion has shifted and the debate on the efficacy of e-cigarettes has begun. Again, science has found that e-cigarettes are the most effective tool for quitting smoking. So in a perfect world, what would come next? You know, last week we talked about crack pens for coke addicts right out of a vending machine. So this week, we have the UK would try out e-cigarette vending machines to sell e-cigarettes. Yup, the UK to trial vaping vending machines. Digital ID tech company One Account has launched a vape vending machine, which will be rolled out to supermarkets this spring. The first machine has been installed at the Leicester branch of the vape retailer eCig Wizard as part of a 12 month trial which will also see them appear at a household name grocery retailer. To purchase products from these machines, customers have to download a One Account app, upload a form of ID to prove their age, and take a selfie. This information is then verified across multiple data points, including phone records. The desired product is then selected before opening the app and scanning a QR code on the machine to make card purchase, payments, and finally dispense the product. The use of vending machines for the sale of consumable products has grown significantly in the recent years as retailers better understand the demands of modern consumers. One account, one account founder and chief executive officer Ben Carroll told the grocer, here in the U.S., you can walk into a grocery store to buy alcohol right from a vending machine. So naturally, you should be able to buy any adult product from a vending machine that age verifies the purchase. Simple logic and common sense regulations are all that is needed for this to happen. But instead of easy access to the scientifically proven best smoking cessation tool, we get ridiculous regulations to ban flavored smoking cessation. Well, you can get flavored nicotine gums and sprays without age verification. They're right on the bottom shelf at your local grocery store. But they're only half as effective to quit smoking as flavored vaping. Demagoguery at its finest. Just like in Portland, Oregon, where the Portland Council approves ban on the sale of flavored tobacco products. Violations of this ordinance will carry fines of $100 to $500 for each offense. Come on, do these bans stop people who want things from getting them? Or does it just create a black market and new criminals to occupy jails? You guys know the answer. Prohibition will never 
Eliminate consumer desire. You can't ban consumer desire. Well, you can try, but there's no hope of achieving any meaningful result. Only unintended consequences and more harm. And that is exactly why teens are vaping fentanyl, poison control warns. Rocky Mountain Poison Center is issuing a warning for parents following a recent cluster of adolescents overdosing on opioids. One of the things we've noticed recently is that we have gotten a fair number of calls to our poison center for young people and adolescents who have been experimenting with vaping fentanyl, Dr. Christopher Hoyt said. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that is 80 to 100 times stronger than morphine. Pharmaceutical fentanyl was originally developed as pain management for cancer patients using an applied patch on the skin. But because it is an extremely powerful opioid and has opioid properties, fentanyl is also diverted for abuse. Fentanyl is added to heroin to increase its potency or is disguised as highly potent heroin. Many users believe that they're purchasing heroin and actually don't know that they're purchasing fentanyl, which often results in overdose deaths. Clandestinely produced fentanyl is primarily manufactured in Mexico and clearly demonstrates drug war economics. Fentanyl is the real epidemic. And it's growing exponentially worse every single year. It's also a highly controlled substance and very highly regulated. So is making something illegal and banned for anyone without a prescription help the problem? Or does it just cause more problems than the existing ones to get worse? The problem clearly isn't a lack of regulations. It's quite the opposite. Trying to regulate desire has only resulted in problems that wouldn't exist if all drugs were legalized. Prohibition never works. It only creates more problems and more harm. That's why we need harm reduction, fully implemented and legal access to a safe supply everywhere. On a side note, if you can't understand why the war on drugs can never be won and why every year the problem just keeps getting worse and worse, I highly recommend you watch a series on Netflix. It's called The Business of Drugs. It took a Navy SEAL and a CIA analyst to investigate the economics driving the growth of six drugs. And you know what? The U.S. continues spending billions annually to eradicate these illegal drugs. But once you see this series, you will easily understand why the war on drugs is equivalent to pissing in the wind during a tornado. In fact, once you understand the economics at play here, it makes perfect sense why the more they spend to eradicate drugs and the more that they regulate these drugs to make them more illegal, the worse the problem is going to get. The war on drugs is an unwinnable war. You cannot regulate desire and consumer demand out of existence. Anyway, moving on to VapeAway and a new filter that significantly eliminates toxic chemical intake while vaping. Just when you thought that the vape scene couldn't get any more ridiculous, along comes VapeAway, a company dedicated to creating a world free from the harmful effects of vaping. Announcing the first ever patented technology designed to help reduce vaping dependency. The VapeAway filter is specifically designed to attach to an existing e-cigarette pod, automatically working to remove toxins found in e-cigarettes, with minimal impact on the quality of the vape experience. The founder of VapeAway talks about his son and 
his six children. He says that his son was addicted to nicotine. Admits that nicotine never killed anybody, but it's all the other harmful chemicals that'll hurt you. So they developed a filter that slips right onto a jewel pot and filters out all the bad stuff. More like these filters are designed to absorb some of the nicotine and allow a Juul user to taper down their nicotine levels to quit vaping. That's great if that's what they want to do. It's probably a brilliant idea. Almost as brilliant an idea as a bottled water filter. Anyway, link in the description if you want to find out more about vape away filtration to make your vape safer. You know, that last bit was almost as brilliant as the next story. Pennsylvania recalls hundreds of medical marijuana vape products with little explanation. What explanation has Pennsylvania provided in the two cryptic emails sent to every cannabis patient and dispensary? After finishing this review, the department has determined that certain vaporized medical marijuana products containing some added ingredients have not been approved for inhalation by the United States Food and Drug Administration. It is unclear why the health department would rely on approval from the federal Food and Drug Administration for cannabis products, despite more than two dozen states legalizing marijuana for medicinal or recreational use, the drug remains illegal at the federal level in the United States. What is the state trying to do here? It's not a thing, says Meredith Bertner, executive director of the Pennsylvania Cannabis Coalition, which represents growers and dispensary owners. The FDA does not approve these types of additives for vaporization. And it's not a role of the FDA, Butner says, noting that the agency doesn't seek out things to approve, especially when it's illegal at the federal level. Meanwhile, in the UK, BAT sales jump on vaping oral nicotine, announces a two billion pound share buyback. British American Tobacco on Friday reported a seven percent rise in the full year adjusted revenue to 25.7 billion pounds, aka 34.8 billion dollars, helped by the sales of e-cigarettes and oral nicotine. You know, like I've said countless times before, folks, the giants will continue to grow no matter what regulations are imposed. And also, like I've said previously and reported previously, Geek Vape and Geek Bar partnered with Aston Martin Team for 2022. And if you missed that episode last year, I'll simply direct you to the Vaping 360 article that was just published about it. But before you get too excited in the hopes of seeing more vape companies sponsoring major sporting events, the Australian Communications and Media Authority investigates tobacco advertising on Grand Prix broadcasts. The ACMA has investigated whether Foxtel breached its obligations in relation to tobacco advertising during two Formula One Grand Prix races last year. Promoting or giving publicity to tobacco advertising is prohibited. The investigation report considered whether the broadcaster had broadcast a tobacco advertisement as defined under the Tobacco Advertising Prohibition Act 1992, a.k.a. the TAP Act, and whether the broadcaster had the requisite intent to broadcast that tobacco advertisement. Long story short, the ACMA found logos for vaping brand Views and Nick Pouch brand Velo present throughout the broadcast as they were plastered on these cars and were technically considered tobacco advertisements as defined by the law. But the licensee was not in breach of the rules because they did not intend to promote or give publicity to smoking or tobacco products. You know, 
the ridiculous fine lines that the politicians draw in the sand are now being scrutinized everywhere. Is this going to eventually prevent vaping companies from sponsorships? Or will they one day welcome these sponsorships like they welcome big pharma advertising dollars? Oh. You can't watch five minutes of TV without being exposed to a big pharma advertisement for some new miracle pill guaranteed not to cure you of your problems, but it will give you dozens of side effects while it minimizes your, prey, your pain or your symptoms. Whoops. Anyway, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about the situation here in Australia. And what do you think about them promoting vaping products right on Formula One cars? I think it'd be pretty cool to see them advertising them on the NASCAR here in the United States. Anyway, moving on. Moving on to Caleb Kennedy of American Idol was hitting vape when he killed a man. Marijuana was involved in a deadly South Carolina crash in which former American Idol contestant has been charged with driving under the influence according to an arrest warrant. Authorities said Caleb Kennedy, 17, ran over a man in his pickup truck Tuesday after driving up a residential driveway. Kennedy told deputies after the crash that he had taken a deep draw from a vaping device and then felt its effects while driving, a prosecutor said in court on Wednesday. Kennedy's lawyer, Ryan Beasley, said no alcohol was involved in this incident. The warrant is the first indication that marijuana is part of the prosecution's felony charge, which carries a sentence of up to 25 years in prison. Isn't it lovely how the article was titled, American Idol was hitting a vape? Well, let's take a look and see what everybody else reported this as. Here's another article about the exact same incident. Police, ex-American Idol star, took marijuana before crash. Well, here's another one. Warrant, American Idol star under the influence of marijuana in deadly crash. Wait a minute. Has the vaping scare story tidal wave finally passed? Have they moved on to the pursuit of marijuana scare stories? Let's take a look, see what we can find. What do you say? Marijuana use high among teen adolescents, young adult vapors, study finds. More than one third of adolescents and half of teens and young adults who vape use the devices for marijuana. A study published Monday by JAMA Pediatrics found about 35% of adolescents ages 12 to 14 years report vaping marijuana, compared with 51% of teens ages 15 to 17 years and 54% of young adults ages 18 to 24, the data showed. One in four young adults ages 18 to 24 years reported using e-cigarettes compared with 14% of those ages 15 to 17 years and 3% of those 12 to 14 years, the researchers said. Hmm... Our findings suggest that many adolescents and young adults who use e-cigarettes are vaping cannabis. Study co-author Royan Sun told UPI in an email. The article continues with flavored vaping was banned by the FDA in February 2020, but studies now reveal marijuana was actually the preferred substance, not flavored nicotine. We were surprised that more than half of young adults who were e-cigarette users, reported cannabis vaping, Sun said. Furthermore, some of these e-cigarette users, about 10%, reported vaping cannabis every time they vaped, she said. Regardless of where you stand on any topic, rest assured that the truth will eventually find its way to the surface. The only question is, Will it be picked up and used for additional propaganda, for additional regulations, or 
Will it be used to correct the overregulation from the last moral panic scare? Just like in Indiana, where last year they implemented a 25% wholesale tax on vaping products. And if nothing changes, well, prices will be going up full, as it's fully implemented starting in July. Well, now, health advocates fighting plan to cut Indiana's vaping tax. Indiana House Ways and Means Committee on Thursday discussed lowering the tax to 15%. But the American Cancer Society said, vaping tax, device tax should be 20% to be in parity with Indiana's 99.5 cent per pack cigarette tax. Groups representing e-cigarette retailers said that Lo the lower tax rate is going to be needed so that Indiana's e-cigarette tax was closer to the rates in neighboring states. Neither side mentioned how it's vitally important that smoking cessation products are taxed less than combustible tobacco products to encourage a move away from combustion. And I think it's a disgrace to everyone involved and misleading for health advocates to tax a product that causes smoking cessation and harm reduction for smokers. But who am I? You know what? Don't ever elect me to any office that controls harm reduction or taxation because I would always side with the greater good. And if I had my way, would ensure the vaping products were not only more readily accessible, but always cheaper than a pack of cigarettes. Proportional regulations base their tax on the harm that a product actually does. Proportionate regulations ensure that the safer products have more availability. Proportionate regulations restrict the most harmful products and encourage usage of less harmful products. Proportionate regulations ensure less harmful products easily enter the marketplace and once they're there, they stay there. It's not complicated like these politicians make it out to be. Well, in New Zealand, their, their regulations are obviously not proportionate. New regulations strip thousands of vape products off shelves. Thousands of vaping products will have to be taken off shelves from Friday as new regulation comes into effect. The move is part of the amended Smoke-Free Vaping Act rolled out 15 months ago, which includes only being legal to sell vape products registered with the Ministry of Health. Action for Smoke-Free 2025 Director Deborah Hart on Friday told Breakfast, the new regulations mean manufacturers need to be more transparent about what's in their products. The government has been rolling out regulations right from the very start of the Smoke-Free Environments and Regulated Products Act. So, from the start of the act until today, one of the things we've been doing is around the safety of the product, she says. Six months ago, importers and manufacturers had to start notifying what was in their products, had to notify labels, packaging, and what's in the products. And today, they had to do all of it. They can only sell what's been notified and to notify that they had to adhere to the safety regime that had been set up by the government. So that's fantastic. Hart said she expected in six months time that there's going to be even more safety measures in place because regulators will be looking at the changes closely and determining even more what can and cannot be sold. However, Hart said most people use vaping to quit smoking, which is fantastic, as it is a lot less harmful than the latter. The New Zealand Health Survey for 2020 2021 
revealed about 88,000 adults quit smoking in a year. What we're seeing is as the vaping rates go up, smoking goes down. It's almost a mirror image when you graph it, Hart said. Well, it's fantastic that the truth about vaping is finally seeing the light of day somewhere. But it's a dog's breakfast that thousands of vape products in New Zealand just vanished from the marketplace. It's also atrocious that fags are available for purchase everywhere. Every single dairy, every single corner store, every single supermarket, gas station, you name it. There's somebody out there selling cigarettes. Nobody has a problem with that. Whatever happened to ensuring the duries are less available than cessation products? Why aren't retailers that see the most cigarette purchases legally required to carry flavored vaping products? And I'm not just talking about mint, menthol, and tobacco. Oh, yeah, that's right. We don't want kids that are going to be breaking the law if they purchase anything to be taking up vaping. So, they're allowed to see all the smokers smoking and going to the corner store to buy smokes, but we can't let them see the single best way for their mom or dad to quit combustion. In New Zealand, all manufacturers and importers must have notification of every single product and must renew every 12 months or they will expire and be removed from the market. I got a question for you. Are the duries required to provide notification and recertification, or is this just limited to the most effective smoking cessation tool known as vaping? You know, ants argue that vaping has not proven effective at the population level to get smokers to quit. And you know what? The New Zealand Health Survey for 2020 and 2021, just move that argument into the bin for recycling. Because here's a country which has seen a 47.8% decline in tobacco duty in one year. And this data from this recent study is showing that as vaping rates go up, people stop smoking. Just imagine how effective vaping could be if it were more available than analog cigarettes everywhere. But that isn't even the case in New Zealand. Because as of last August, New Zealand general retailers, including service stations, supermarkets, and convenience stores, are no longer allowed to sell any flavor besides menthol, mint, and tobacco. It's crazy the Kiwis desperate to quit cigarettes can walk into a service station and buy any cigarette brand under the sun. They can't, however, access the most popular vape flavors. It makes no sense when vaping has been proven to be 95% less harmful than smoking, says Jonathan Devery, co-owner of the largest Kiwi-owned vape company, Alt New Zealand, and Vapo. Moving on. Huffing and puffing. Study reveals that nearly half of us don't actually know how vaping works. Since the advent of e-cigarettes in 2003, the brainchild of a Chinese smoker and pharmacist, Han Lick, it has been widely acknowledged that they are less harmful than an actual cigarette. Hence, why so many people use them to break their addiction to smoking. In fact, Han Lick himself used to smoke up to three packs of cigarettes a day. And it wasn't until his father, also a smoker, died of lung cancer, that he was impelled to invest something, invent something that would only simulate cigarette smoke without the harmful effects of the real thing. It seems we have come full circle once again. But for those of you out there who don't actually know about vaping and how it works, 
let me give you a quick rundown. All you need is some vegetable glycerin. About 75% of a bottle of e-liquid is made up of vegetable glycerin, scientifically proven to be safe. Then you go and you get yourself your favorite flavor, whatever it may be, has to be water-based flavor. No oil is ever in any nicotine vape. I guarantee you that because it will not mix. Oil and water do not mix. Fundamental science should teach you that. And you put about that much of it into this whole bottle. About 10%, maybe 15% if you're really pushing the flavors or there's a lot of different flavors in there. And then you simply top it off with some propylene glycol. And that's it. That is exactly what is in this nicotine-free e-liquid. And that is exactly what's in all the nicotine-free e-liquids. It's not rocket science. If you're a smoker and you wanna quit smoking, well, you're obviously going to need nicotine to make up for the nicotine you're not gonna get when you stop smoking. For me, when I quit, the nicotine concentration in my e-liquid was 0.6%. That translates to six milligrams per milliliter. And then you just taper your way down until you're nicotine free. That's what you wanna do. Or if you're willing to accept the minimal risks that come from the flavoring agents, because science has already proven that VG and PG are safe for inhalation. And actually most of these flavors have already been proved safe for inhalation. You can keep doing what you're doing and enjoy it. That is the wonderful thing about vaping. All of these ingredients have been individually proven to be safe for inhalation. But it took Han Lick to discover how to smoke without smoke. It has all the pleasure of smoking and almost none of the toxicity present from combustion. What a glorious miracle for smokers. And what an inconvenient truth for others. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science and Advocacy News for the week ending February 12th, 2021. You know, I sincerely hope that all of you have a very happy Valentine's Day. Know that each and every one of you out there fighting a good fight for harm reduction is loved and appreciated for all your hard work. I also want to thank all of you for your thoughtful comments that you put on these videos. In my heart of hearts, one day, vaping will completely replace combustion. So until next week, please be good to each other and keep on vaping. Stop.